Mike Filipov here. Today we're going to talk about five ways to improve your legato technique. And the beautiful thing about legato is once you understand the basic principles of what makes legato work, not only will you be able to do hammer-ons, pull-offs, and slides all over the guitar cleanly, but anything and everything involving your fretting hand on guitar will get better and will start to sound better as well. So the better your legato is, the better your overall fretting hand technique is going to be. First, let me tell you what will not improve your legato. Legato is not about making your fretting hand fingers as strong as possible, at least not in the traditional sense. Yes, there is a strength component to legato, and we'll talk about that in just a second, but it is very nuanced, very specialized, and it has nothing to do with the traditional idea of strength training, like squeezing the grip master, or doing fingertip push-ups, or lifting weights, or doing wrist curls, or anything like that. I made a whole video about this idea of finger and hand strength for guitar, which you can check out right here, but for right now, let's talk about what actually does make your legato better. Idea number one, understand both motions of a pull-off. Now most people think about pull-offs as one action. The finger that's doing the pull-off just snaps off the string, it sounds a note, job is done, right? No. There are actually two motions involved in a pull-off. Let me show you. Let's say I'm going to do a pull-off from the ring finger down to the index finger. If I were to simply pull down with the ring finger towards the floor, like this, what do you see happening? You see that the string is obviously bending, and if I did that with distortion on, you would hear that it sounds really horribly out of tune. That's obviously not the sound you want. So that brings me to the second element of clean and clear pull-offs. To avoid the note going out of tune, what I need to do, in this case with the index finger, is I need to push the index finger up towards the ceiling a little bit, just enough to counterbalance the pulling force that the ring finger is doing. Like this. Now most people are either not aware of this at all, or they don't deliberately focus on training the two motions of good pull-offs when they practice legato. And so they run into one of two problems. One is, they have to do legato really, really softly to avoid pulling the string off the fretboard or bending strings out of tune on their pull-offs, or they squeeze so hard with the finger that's going to be supporting the string right after the pull-off that their whole hand becomes really, really tense like this, and so they have to do legato really slowly and they can't build any real speed. Well, now that you understand the two motions of a pull-off, anytime you practice any legato lick, focus on deliberately training these two motions into your technique and into your muscle memory. It doesn't matter if you're just doing a trill on a pair of notes or if you're playing a scale sequence like this. <laughs> Anytime you do a pull-off, be conscious of doing the two motions we talked about. And to help you master the two elements of a clean pull-off you just learned, I bring you idea number two. This is where you turn the volume off on your guitar and you practice completely unplugged. Obviously, this will be quite humbling, and of course, you're not going to play anywhere near as fast as you can when your distortion is on. But this brings us to a very nuanced and very legato-specific area of strength training. And here's what it's all about. Instead of squeezing the notes harder or doing anything stupid like just trying to make your squeezing power better in your fretting hand, what you're going to do is exaggerate the pulling motion with the finger doing the pull-off and the pushing motion with the finger that's going to catch the string right after the pull-off. That's where the strength is going to come from, and the only way you can really build that strength is by practicing pull-offs the way I just showed you. So when you're playing slowly, your fingers are going to be working overtime to get the notes to come out. But after a bit of this kind of practice, you will build the right level of strength in your fretting hand, so when you turn distortion back on, you're playing, you're just gonna feel like hot knife through butter. That's because the strength level that you build from playing unplugged, you will only need maybe like 10, 15, 20% of that level of strength ever in your real life playing. But obviously, the higher your maximum level of strength, the easier it is to play fast with a much, much lower level of strength. To translate that into the world of strength training, let's say you can bench press 200 kilos, then of course, benching 100 kilos is gonna feel like nothing is on the bar. At the same time, notice how nuanced this strength building exercise, if you will, that I just showed you is. It's completely different from just building raw brute strength in the fingers because that can create tension and all kinds of other problems that you don't want to be dealing with in legato. You really want to be doing the motions that are legato specific to build legato specific strength. Of course, the challenge with this kind of practice is it's very easy to develop excessive muscle tension in your body if you're not careful. And tension, as you probably know, is a killer of guitar speed. So that brings me to idea number three, which is to be quick to relax between notes. Now, this may sound very contradictory or confusing, like how the heck are you supposed to relax between notes? Well, let me show you. What you do when you practice slowly, you do a pull-off, 
And while the pull-off is sustaining here, what you want to do is check the rest of your body for tension and relax everything that's not involved in doing the pull-off. Even the finger that just did the pull-off itself should be relaxed at this point. Then you do the next note and repeat the process. Relax everything. And as you practice slowly, one note at a time, you check your body for tension and relax. If you want some help with this, I have another video tutorial on how to relax excess tension. You can check it out right here. But that is idea number three for legato. Be quick to relax between notes. The fourth way to improve your legato fast is to use what I call non-perpendicular fretting on strings two and one of your guitar. Watch, as I'm about to play a scale, this knuckle and this knuckle are perpendicular to the frets, pretty much. And as I play, watch what happens to these knuckles as I reach strings two and one. <laughs> Notice how I angled my hand slightly to get into non-perpendicular position and these two knuckles are no longer perpendicular to the frets. The reason I do this is because it's easier to do pull-offs, much easier to do pull-offs on the higher strings when the hand is in this non-perpendicular position. When your fingers are like this, not only does your thumb have to come way down here like this, which makes pull-offs harder to do to begin with, but also, it's a lot harder to do pull-offs by just pulling with the finger. If you angle the hand a little bit like this, the thumb is going to come up on the strings like so, a little bit. It's not hanging over the edge of the fretboard. It is still behind it, but it is higher to give your fingers more leverage, and now the wrist and the forearm can be involved as well. This is a much more ergonomic position for the fretting hand to do legato on the higher strings. If you wanna know more about non-perpendicular fretting and how to use it in your playing, I'm gonna put a link to another video tutorial I have on this right here. There I'm gonna show you a lot more examples of what it is and how to use it, as well as other examples of guitar players other than myself using it in their playing as well. And finally, my fifth tip for how to make your legato easier to do fast is to build more calluses in your fretting hand finger because the thicker your calluses are, the less power and the less strength you need to push the notes down to begin with, just for fretting regular notes, and the easier it becomes to do hammer-ons, pull-offs, and slides. And the single best way I know to build a lot of calluses really quickly is to actually not practice legato at all, and instead practice the crap out of your vibrato and string bends. Sit there for five minutes and practice vibrato with every finger. <laughs> And not only will your vibrato get better and your phrasing will improve, but you will build calluses all over the fingertips really quickly and that'll make your legato feel like butter as well. And by the way, if you want some help with your vibrato technique, check out this video right here where I'll walk you through a simple practice drill you can do in just a few minutes that'll make your vibrato sound a lot better. So, there you have it. Let me know in the comments below which of the five tips I gave you helped your legato the most. And if you ask me a good question down there, I'll actually go through and answer your question personally. And if you ask me a really good question, I may make a video response for you in the future as well well. And if you want to know more about how to build guitar speed without doing any slow practice, hit the link in the description of this video or go to the page that's on the screen right now and I'm going to show you a free one-hour masterclass called Guitar Speed Formula. There I walk you through a simple process you can follow to build guitar speed without having to start slow and build guitar speed in a few beats per minute at a time because let's face it, that's pretty boring and who the hell likes to do that. If you want to know how to build speed in a different way, check out this link, enter your email address, I'll send it right over to you. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell so you're notified every single time I upload new videos just like this for you. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. See you next time.